Hello everybody and welcome to today's video, an updated guide to which power and conflict poems compare best. Now in one way, it's probably possible to compare every poem with every other poem. After all, they are all in the same cluster. But what we want to do is make the very best choices of poems to compare. I'm going to make some suggestions of how to do that, but there are lots of different ways to look at this, and of course it also depends on the specific wording of the exam question. So there are two points that came up in past exam reports which I've used to influence this video. The first, and this is a paraphrase of a comment from the 2019 exam report, was that students who focused their analysis on ideas rather than methods were often more successful. Now, what this means is this. Let's say our question is about the presentation of war in The Charge of the Light Brigade and one other poem, and we reread The Charge of the Light Brigade, and we annotate it, and we pick out the ballad form, the religious imagery, the dactylic dimeter. Well, that doesn't then mean that we're looking for a second poem which uses form, imagery, and meter for effect. No, what we should do is reread the named poem with the question in mind and come up with our idea about what the poem says in terms of the question. So perhaps the Charge of the Light Brigade praises the bravery of those involved in war, but also subtly highlights its pointlessness. And then with that in mind, we think about a second poem to compare to. The second important thing is that we want to present a structured line of argument in our answer, rather than just essentially writing the same thing again and again in different ways. And this is so important. This again is a paraphrase from something taken from the 2019 exam report, that some students wrote multiple paragraphs that were quite alike, showing the same level of understanding again and again, instead of advancing their argument. And these students could improve by learning how to develop, structure, and form an essay to illustrate a perspective or answer a question. So let me give you an example of this. Imagine you have a question on power in Extract from the Prelude and you come up with the idea, nature is powerful, and you choose your second poem, Kamikaze. Well, you've only got one point to make there, that nature is powerful. So what's going to happen is you're going to write your first paragraph showing how nature is powerful, then another paragraph showing how nature is powerful, then another showing how nature is powerful, then another showing how nature is powerful, and basically there'll be no movement or progression in the answer. So what I like to do is look for comparisons where there is a two-part line of argument, perhaps in the case of Extract from the Prelude, that initially humans are presented as thinking they are powerful, but ultimately it is nature that is truly powerful. And then in the first half of my answer, I'm going to look at the human illusion of power, and the second half will look at nature's true power. So now I've got some progression in my answer, and I like a two-part line of argument because I think, given the time constraints of this question, that's about the perfect amount to go for. And with those two things in mind, here are the pairings that I would make. But again, remember, it does depend on what the question is. And there are lots of different ways to do this. I've just looked for ways to cover every poem in the minimum amount of groupings and with a two-part line of argument based on ideas. So here's the first one. Ozymandias and My Last Duchess both explore how humans think they are all-powerful, and that's symbolised through art in both poems, but ultimately this sense of power is revealed to be an illusion. The Charge of the Light Brigade and Exposure both explore how soldiers are worthy of great honour, but war involves pointless suffering. Kamikaze and Extract from the Prelude both explore how humans think they are all-powerful, but ultimately it is nature that is truly powerful. Now you'll see here that I've actually paired that one up in the example that I said wasn't very good, but what I've done is I've extended my line of argument. I'm not just saying nature is powerful, I'm saying that both actually present humans thinking they're powerful and then undermine that and nature humbles those humans to realise actually nature is truly powerful. War Photographer and Poppies both explore the domestic impact of war, but War Photographer focuses on the national indifference, whereas Poppies focuses on personal grief. Storm on the Island and The Emigre. Now, Storm on the Island is a great poem to compare to lots of things, but I was thinking, well, what compares with The Emigre? Not so many. So I think these actually pair up nicely. Both address the power of nature and place, but while Storm on the Island demonstrates the destructive power of nature, The Emigre emphasises the enduring emotional connection to the speaker's homeland. 
Checking Out Me History and London both challenge the institutions that define and confine identity, but whilst Checking Out Me History critiques the education system, London reveals the oppressive nature of government and religion. Remains and Bayonet Charge both explore the personal impact of conflict, but whilst Remains examines the lingering psychological consequences of a soldier's actions, Bayonet Charge focuses on the immediate struggle experienced by a soldier during battle, and Tissue with Ozymandias both explore how humans try to control and exert power, but ultimately it is nature that is truly powerful. Now, as I said, there are different ways to pair the poems. This is just one approach. You can put a comment in the comment section if you think you've got other ways of mapping them out. However, just one thing I would like to say here. Sometimes you will find a poem where there is one line of comparison, but perhaps that's it. For example, imagine a question on the presentation of power and extract from the prelude and one other poem, and you think, okay, well, um, this is a poem about the fact that humans think they're powerful, but ultimately it's nature that is truly powerful. Powerful. Now, as a second poem, you might initially think of exposure, because that also presents nature as powerful, but that's just one part of the argument. Exposure doesn't show how humans think they are powerful. If anything, it actually highlights human vulnerability. So if you were to compare those two poems, you might have a nice bit of your answer about the power of nature, but when you write about the human perception of power in Extract from the Prelude, what are you going to compare it to in exposure? Now, it's not to say it's impossible to make these into good answers, but I think sometimes there are poems that line up uh, more clearly um, for uh, a better answer. Now, I've made a series of first five-minute videos where I say, OK, if this was the named poem, here's the first five minutes of what I would be thinking about. So do watch those if you found this useful. And if you like the channel, please do give it a video a thumbs up.